What I'd like to do is uh, speak a little bit about um, some of the IT infrastructure that the Translational Medicine Institute has built um, to facilitate the integration of uh, clinical and genomic data. Um, we sort of built this plane uh, while we were flying it, um, but I think we're, we're pretty, pretty pr proud of the finished product. So just to give you a quick um, overview of the Innova Health System, if you missed Ben's talk yesterday, this is, uh, this is the largest uh, nonprofit health system in the Washington, D.C. area. It's a six-hospital ambulatory system with about two million uh, patient visits a year. Uh, more importantly to a study that I manage, it's about 20,000 deliveries a year. Um, and the institute's located um, in Fairfax. Um, at the main teaching hospital campus that has um, about 1,000 beds and about 10,000 deliveries a year. So in 2010, uh, the Nova Health System decided to found um, the Translational Medicine Institute. Um, and the mandate really of the institute is to translate um, genomic research to the bedside and to actually affect um, clinical care. We're about actually 100 FTEs now. It's about a third clinical, about a third IT, and about a third lab. Um, and we have a number of uh, studies, about 14 ongoing right now. All of them are um, whole genome based. All of them are family based in that the, what we call the family trio is the enrollment unit, uh, mother, father, and baby. Um, our largest study by far is the one that my team manages, which is our longitudinal birth cohort. Um, uh, the structure really, briefly, the overview of the study is um, we've got uh, uh, clinical research coordinators embedded in obstetric clinics um, in the health system. We recruit uh, mothers in about week 26. Um, we enroll families. We do whole genome sequencing on the entire family, and it's a longitudinal uh, observational out 18 years. Uh, Mothers fill out surveys online uh, every six months, and we get a number of samples, uh, primarily whole genome sequencing, but we do miRNA, RNA-seq, um, and methylation right now. We're integrating microbiome, a couple other things. But this is by far and large our largest, our largest uh, generator of omics and clinical data. Um, but this um, combined really with uh, our other studies, um, we are reaching now about actually 13,000 participants, and there's, and there's a genome associated with every one of them, so we've broken the 10,000 genome mark um, at, the, at the Institute. Uh, the D.C. area is particularly diverse areas. So we've got over 120 actual countries of birth, so the pediatric birth cohort is really effectively an international um, birth cohort. Um, but what this does is, with this many participants and this many types of data, it's generating literally uh, millions of files. And so not only did that pose um, storage issues because it's petabyte scale, um, but it's literally mi millions of files. And so logistically dealing with all of this um, has been a challenge. Um, in addition, we have the challenge of actually bringing in um, the HR data. It's longitudinal, so it's not a single draw. We, we basically uh, take a, a capture nightly. Um, and this is, once again, millions of clinical variables that are coming out of the Innova Health System's EHR system. Um, we've got um, a dedicated biobank with hundreds of thousands of uh, biospecimens right now, and those are all tracked. And not just whether we have them or not, um, but which stage of processing they're in, QA, QC, um, et cetera. And then our biological data pipeline. So for each um, omic data type that we bring in, uh, there's a custom data pipeline that's built. And so data and processes have required us to, uh, to build an IT infrastructure um, that has been in evolution, but it's effectively what we call uh, uh, the hybrid architecture. Um, hybrid uh, basically being that we've got cloud and on-prem. Um, in 2010, uh, when, we got, uh, when we basically founded the institute, um, we basically had the uh, lower bubble, which is just what we call Nova Health System, and they had some very bare bones EDC systems, uh, Open Clinic, uh, Red Cap, some basic limbs um, systems, and we knew right away when we started um, getting the omics data in that um, the infrastructure that the Nova Health System had could not handle uh, petabyte scale with millions of objects. There was just no way. So very naturally, we went to the cloud, 
Um, and we went initially with Amazon Cloud Services. So all of our uh, uh, biological sequence data um, is stored in the cloud. And then basically to bridge the two, uh, we built a, a segregated research network where we've got really a world-class high-performance com co compute and a Hadoop cluster, and that basically uh, bridges the two. So we can sort of take a closer look um, at each of these three environments. If we look at now where the Innova Health System on-prem uh, capabilities stand, the EHR system is epic. Um, it's actually, uh, they instituted this only about three years ago. It's been a learning curve for all of the hospitals, um, but it's a great resource for us. We're able to flag all of our research participants. And actually right now, we're doing auto extraction of sort of the high level demographic data, um, laboratory results, et cetera. We're gonna be looking at really automating all of the draws of the EHR data that we bring in from Epic. Um, and Epic is branding that as a uh, Kogodo warehouse. Um, we're probably gonna have that go live in 2016. Our EDC system for most of our studies is Metadata Rave. Um, the sort of really unique um, custom function capabilities on their CRFs allowed us to have the enrollment unit be the TRIO. And at the time when we instituted the study three years ago, they were really the only EDC system capable of doing that. Um, we're still doing a lot of manual data extraction from Epic, but like I said, um, quite a bit of that is gonna be transitioning to full automation uh, within the next year. And then all of this data is basically, oops, sorry, uh, is basically uh, brought down uh, into a relational data warehouse, which is Microsoft uh, SQL Server. It's a standard ETL um, with SSIS, and that allows us basically to process about 20 data sources nightly. So we're basically drawing um, copies of everything from here into, uh, into our relational data warehouse on a nightly basis, um, and it's stored there. Um, our cloud environment, uh, it's like I said, it's Amazon. It's, uh, we have S3, which is uh, object-based storage. Um, took us about a year to negotiate this BAA. Uh, Amazon really didn't initially want to deal with uh, patient data. Um, and so we use encryption, we use group policies in order to be HIPAA compliant. Um, we use EC2. Um, you know, that allows us to, uh, it's their elastic compute, it allows us to spin up and spin down compute instances on the fly for our scientists. Um, it turns out they had to be dedicated in order to meet HIPAA compliance, and so there are no shared instances. Um, and then we have a columnar database that's a petabyte scale um, called Redshift, where we store what we call our ITMI data marts, which are really um, custom data subsets for uh, our collaborators and our researchers um, uh, that we can actually uh, provide visualization tools like Tableau for them. So we'll pull out uh, data sets. We get about 30 or 40 different requests from uh, collaborators at the NIH, et cetera, on a, on a, on a weekly basis, and we'll park them there. Um, so then our segregated research network, um, for really the star of this is uh, an SGI UV2K high performance uh, compute that we had built. Some of the statistics are 512 uh, cores, it's hyper threaded, so about uh, 1024 virtual petabyte of storage, 16 terabytes of RAM. It's got a uh, job batching system called PBS Pro, and actually that's been a bit of a headache for us. Um, <laughs> We'll have uh, our researchers actually uh, batch um, their jobs and run them sequentially. Um, we sometimes have to step in and shut them down because one, so we, this has been a balancing act and a sort of point of contention. We're still sort of uh, working on that point. Um, but in order to use this resource, uh, we realize basically we've got to pull some of the data out of the cloud um, to get it on-prem. And so we've layered on uh, quite a bit of uh, NetApp uh, flash storage um, so that we can read and write very quickly from the cloud. And then we have a device called Avere, which effectively um, integrates our cloud and our on-prem environment for our users. It gives it the impression that it's a single integrated environment. And so we're not really having to move uh, much of the data very much. It's, uh, they're able to sort of use it where it lies effectively. Um, and so what we're doing is creating sort of these self-serve then environments for our clinicians and for our bioinformaticians. And so uh, for statistical visualization, we use Tableau, which is sort of best in breed um, for that. And this has been, uh, I have to admit, this has been a, a wonderful software suite um, for our clinicians. And then we're working with a company called um, Genospace. Um, 
to develop really a custom web portal, uh, which is uh, uh, something we call a cohort browser, where, where we're basically matching genotypic and phenotypic data, and this is sort of a work in progress, but it's, um, um, it'll be a tool that'll, that'll be available to all, all of our bioinformaticians. So um, basically what we've been able to accomplish in building this, this hybrid cloud um, infrastructure at ITMI is that you know, effectively our research data requests that before used to take weeks or months when we were manually pulling this out of Epic or manually extracting it for our EDC systems is now just taking days or hours. We've effectively stayed, saved millions of dollars uh, by avoiding building a, a bunch of data uh, uh, servers uh, for, for storage on site at ANOVA and I don't think we really have the infrastructure for that. Um, our analytics with the, uh, with the UV2K have gone from weeks to hours, and then the data movement issue, which uh, we've only really started to appreciate in the last year. You know, if you're trying to move a, a, peta, a petabyte, um, something like that can take sometimes up to a month, and so uh, um, we're not having to do anything like that anymore. So, so it's, we're still building this plane while we're flying it, but uh, that's, that's the IT structure at, uh, at uh, ITMI currently, and it's still a work in progress.